from this court. I think you have. Now, just tell That's us sweet. some of the places, and I know you have a list of places that you've been, but just share some of the places that you've gone to. Okay. So some of the, um, and I'll share some of the places that aren't in the usual travel place that I've been to, that I actually have now become some of my favorites and places I plan on returning to. So um, number one was India. And um, I loved, love the time there. If you love history and there's so much culture, the architecture there, the people, the vibe, the spirit, and what I like about that side of the world is they grow up where spirituality, education, and everything is kind of together. So, and they're more tolerant of different religions, you know, because there's Hindi, Muslim, there's some Christian, there's other forms of uh, Buddhism, and they all are kind of accepting in these different temples. So I do find, and I'm not saying they haven't had cultural rifts and stuff. I mean, historically, there's there's always been different areas, but just as a tourist or as a person and a person living there, you see this uh, diversity within acceptance. Now they do have the caste system. That's very hard to see, but it actually reminded me of what blacks went through in America. Even today, we still have a caste system. We just don't call it that. We have, um, I had such a great time there just with all of the beauty and I'm a foodie. So I feel like one of the things you get from traveling is to explore different foods, cultures, cuisines. I mean, it's just, the palate is just gonna just like fulfill you. If, and if you're opposed to curry, you know, they got other stuff besides curry, you know? And I, the funny part, I had a, oh, I'm sorry. I had a friend, let me turn this off. I had a friend ask me, does it smell like curry everywhere? And I laughed because I was like, I think so. <laughs> and I remember my flight, um, I think I flew from LA, would I come from LA? Yeah, I flew from LA to, I think we connected in London and then I went to London, London to India. And I remember that European flag to India every so often, and you've seen us on international flights, the flight attendants walk down and spray. Yeah. I had never seen that before. And I thought, why are they spraying? And I always kept a scarf with me anyway. And because of, um, um, how do I say this? Different cultural norms. Right. That, and, and in America, people are surprised to find out a lot of countries don't use deodorant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it's hot and sweaty and, and humid outside, like when I went in July, mm -hmm. there are some strong pugnant smells right. when you mix in the foods and body odors and everything. Um, so after you're going to see cows just walking down the street, like you see stray dogs, you'll see elephants in some of the rural areas, like a stray, like a stray cat. Mm. So those are kind of cool to see like elephants and cows. They just kind of walking around freely, you know, so, so, um, but the, the thing I like most about it is that darker skin, even though India has that, but when they saw black women, I, first they thought I was from Brazil. And then I started speaking they're like, oh, you're American. There's this fascination with all things American. And not even just American. And I hate to say this, but my one, uh, one of my tour guides, he's like, oh, we love black people. They hate Americans. And for them, American me meant white. Mm -hmm. And I was really shocked that he told me that. And so I said, really? He said, oh yeah, we love you guys. And they named off every famous singer. They know all the music. So I was really shocked at how much they knew. And um, and then the second place I would name that is one of my favorite in my top, I say my top five. Kind of has a similar vibe of India, but I would say it's like an island version of India was Sri Lanka. It was just more peaceful and if I, I haven't been to Bali yet, but from what I've been told, it reminds me of like a blend between like Balinese culture and like a Caribbean vibe, you know, very laid back. The people are very, you know, most of them are, I think more Buddhist and they're just very peaceful and they look like us. Mm. Oh, really? So when we're walking around, so South Indians look like black Americans just with a, a silk press. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I like that. <laughs> and, with, and with natural hair, I had my hair natural that time. And I noticed from, I don't know if it was the foods, the sun, the water. I noticed my hair grade started to change after a month. 
I think oh. I was out, I was gone for six weeks for that oh. first leg of the trip. So for six weeks, by that fourth week, I had no relaxer, no hot, no flat iron, nothing. And all of a sudden my hair had that wavy Brazilian kind of wave. I was like, oh, my curls are loosening up. Is it the salt water or what? Um, but I noticed we look like them just with, you know, when we straighten our hair. So you feel kinmanship and um, they're very welcoming, just a peaceful people. I didn't feel like anybody was trying to get me. Like I just walked around this village by myself on the beach, got a got a bike, got a, t a tuk tuk, you know, and just kind of went around with the driver and just got the tour. Did my whole eat, pray, love. I stayed at an ashram there and did yoga and meditations and Ooh. everything we ate from the land. So it was a really spiritual experience, and it was also just so enlightening. And it made me realize we don't need all these things that we've come to possess. Because for that whole month, I just had one suitcase and I had everything I needed. And that was probably some of the most um, fun and joy I had. And it was it was such a contrast to the day-to-day -day grind from working in corporate America, focused on this. Okay, I have this meeting, I have this event to go to where we're just on the go constantly. And I went to the other side of the world where everybody's taking their time. Like we wake up, in the morning, we have yoga, we sit around and have tea. And then after that, they're just like, oh, well, what do you wanna do for the rest of the day? Let's just take an afternoon stroll, or let's just go down to the uh, river and wash and bathe the elephants. So I'm swimming in the river with elephants and um, hanging out, just Sri watching. And this mm -hmm. is Sri yep, that's in Sri Lanka. Yeah, so, um, and I don't, I don't think that we've been marketed all of those cultures. You know, we, we get growing up as a black American, we were taught, oh, London, Paris, Greece, Spain, Rome. And, um, okay, and I've been to Rome. I'll use another one. Rome, I went to Italy, and I don't want to overcast Italy, but I've, I've only been to Rome. Outside of the architecture and all the historical places, I'd never have to go back. <laughs> what I already saying, and I've said it on this channel before. Check several places off in Italy. Done. It was a checkbox for me. Never have to go back. Do it. People, oh, you should go here. Okay, I might try Venice just to see the canals and everything. But um, I didn't feel, I in Rome, I felt like I was in, uh, um, I don't want to do this to Portland. Portland. Or... Or, um, that's another place. I would just, you know, it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a welcoming vibe. And I didn't like the way when I saw African brothers and sisters there that were working and uh, migrant workers or however they want to name it. I didn't like the way I saw them treated. And when we went in certain stores that I had saved all year with my hard American money mm -hmm. and can drop and buy anything in this store, mm -hmm. it was like, Hello, you know, that snobbishness, kind of, it was that kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. And I remember sometimes, and I, I'm sure, I'm sure black women can feel this. Um, when you go in a store and they don't give you the respect you need and you want to buy something just to prove <laughs> like, I can buy, you know, okay, have fun, please. And so <laughs> I remember doing that, me and my girlfriend um, in Atlanta, so we went Got in this store, it was this exotic, you know, this nice Italian leather and everything we're looking, he's like, that's 500, da, 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 da. And I was like, okay, I can see the price, you know? Right. And uh, we're picking up little stuff and I was like, oh, this is gorgeous. Um, yeah, would you like to purchase it? I said, not yet, I'm still inspecting it, you know? Mm -hmm. So then I was like, you know, let's just mess with him. And I remember going up to the register with a bunch of stuff and we had already had all this, we had converted our cash to euros okay so I pull, i'm pulling out euros and then he oh and then his his attitude changed immediately oh ma'am let me show you this i said you know what that's okay i think we're gonna go to the store over here and we just <laughs> left we left all that on the counter i was it was and then i felt afterwards i felt bad like why did i need to have him validate me in that moment and we were talking about how we've been and, and the reason that's important is because globally, we've been so 
disenfranchised and are as a black person we have these negative stereotypes we have to overcome every time we travel mm -hmm. so you know with my integrity and I, I feel like when I'm traveling I might be the first black American they've ever met so I put this tremendous pressure on myself and I know not everybody does because I've seen some of other people when I've gone to other places that just embarrass the shit out of me I'm sorry I'm trying to <laughs> embarrass I, yeah I really like, I'm <sighs> Or we're in um, we're in some sacred holy ground, you know, and you're supposed to be talk. I mean, be talk softly and be respectful. Uh, the number one offenders of this, and I apologize to anybody Chinese, but Chinese tourists, I've seen them go in temples and just you're taking pictures. It's a big sign, no pictures, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of us do it too, like mm -hmm. just being respectful. So, um, but anyway, I've seen that happen, and that's just. That's just interesting, but I have to, I have to grab myself when I'm thinking, let go of this burden. You're not the representative of the black race. This person might be there only in encounter with you, but don't put that undue pressure on yourself. I'm just, just trying to live in the moment, you know? Um, and then I'd say my other favorite places that I, I, I would go back to Fiji. Um, I feel like that is, you know, Wakanda paradise. Then there's Ghana. Mm -hmm. Um, which I feel like is already there. You know, it's like the metropolis. Like Fiji, I think would be like the island version of, of Ghana for me, um, where everybody's just like laid back, you know. And, and then of course, you know, all the Caribbean, I've been to most of the Caribbean. Um, and you, most people outside the resort don't experience um, the locals and really get a sense of the true culture. But because my father's from Trinidad, been to Trinidad, Jamaica. I've probably been to Jamaica more times than I've been to Trinidad, surprisingly. But, you know, you get that vibe and that spirit. So I feel like I grew up with that. So when I go there, that's just like having fun. But from a cultural standpoint, um, you know, the Southeast Asian countries, I've been to Thailand. I would definitely go back there. It's just, again, welcoming like that Sri Lanka vibe. They're very engaging with tourists and it's inexpensive, you know, for the most part. Once you, your most expensive thing is gonna be your plane ticket there. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've encouraged a lot of people, if you wanna try a place far away, but still feel safe, Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you wanna venture out, oh, go ahead. No, no, go, what, what were you gonna say? If you wanna... um, I was gonna say, if you wanna venture out and do, like I've gone to Turkey and some other places and, um, you just gotta be a little careful. I mean, it's safe, but you just gotta be careful because I think the day I left Turkey, they had an explosion or some bombing near the Blue Mosque area, you know, because there's all this protest. You have a lot of religious uh, insurgents and different people. So when you go to that part of the world, you just have to be careful, just stay abreast of what's going on. But this is the melanin for protection, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, this is the skin. <laughs> because surprisingly, we travel globally I, I feel safer outside of US. Um, I haven't felt unsafe. I'm trying to think if I've ever felt unsafe outside of America. Um, and I would say no, maybe, maybe once when I left the resort and we ventured to some club outside of Kingston, a Jamaica once, but that was more like, okay, you might be on the north side of St. Louis and something's happening or back in the day. I mean, it, to me, it's no different than any American city. So when people say, oh, it's dangerous here, it's dangerous there. I say, well, that's a lie. You live in the um, top five murder capital of, of America. Like, what are you talking about? It's dangerous for you to go to Target. Absolutely. And I say <laughs> that they, You know, the cops, Absolutely. you might not make it back here. Absolutely. So I've, I haven't felt that type. And when the police stops or something, I don't feel the anxiety. Oh my God, do I have this? Do I have that? I don't feel that abroad that we feel here. Mm -hmm. You, you, in such a short, just um, talking about your experiences, you touched on a lot. Um, one of the things that stood out to me is you talked about showing up in the skin in which we live in daily. In these other countries, we have, I think as Americans, and especially a lot as Black Americans, we think or we don't understand the magnitude of our color around the world, yeah. right? Yeah. So most of us think if we show up in certain uh, countries, we're not going to be seen. And you just mentioned um, a couple places that I would not have expected, like um, Sri Lanka or India, um, that our skin would be 
um, okay, valued. You know, I wouldn't. It was, um, it was celebrated. You know, I mm-hmm. felt, and and actually, she might see this, but a friend of mine who's Australian was with us, and we were in this tour group, and I was the only black woman. And all of the locals everywhere we went, like we were leaving the fabric stores and I'm trying on saris. And um, India does have a very, I won't get too much in all the cultural stuff with women because there is there is that. But mm-hmm. people would just come by and they want to take pictures and they're just, she's like, wait a minute, why is everybody trying to like, you know, see you and not me? Cause I'm like, well, they see white people all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? And I said, and then they were calling me, um, I think Majorata, Majorata, I believe the word was. It meant like queen mother. They were calling, you know, because I, I was like, oh, okay. The, I think I'm think I'm saying it right. But it was it was very interesting. And they were so like excited to see me put on their saris. And it was like, oh, you look, Black Americans, you guys look like South Indians and you look like this and you look like you're our culture. You look like one of us. You're one of us. Oh, and they were just super friendly, like you're one of us, you know, because and many of them were darker than me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like I said, they just got that silk press hair. Okay, <laughs> like, I like how you describe it. Like Virgin <laughs> Remy, you know, twenty two <laughs> inches. <laughs> so we're not too far off when we put that in our heads. <laughs> no. Hey guys. Thank you for watching. Check out part two of the conversation with Miss Courtney. Be blessed.